Thank you guys so much for joining us. This session is called Creating in the Cloud. And I uh, also want to thank the people online for uh, tuning in for that as well. Before we get started in the discussion, we're going to show you a video just to give you a, a good idea of what we're going to be talking about. Um, hello, I'm Tara Naomi. Uh, we are attempting to record the first ever album over Google Hangouts. Um, it's Can never we... been done before. Um, I have all this stuff set up here and, um, and we're going to record and the project is going to be called Nothing to Hide because as you can see, we are going to let you see everything. Come on down, you're the next contestant. George Ruiz, come on down. You're the next contestant on, on the Tara Naomi album project hangout. Okay, I'll keep talking. La 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 la. Do you know how badly I want to watch Cupcake Wars right now? Holy crap. Wait, are we on? Is that what uh, the audience is saying it sounds better? So they heard me doing all that? I didn't know we were broadcasting. Just act like it's a concert and a class at the same time. You're teaching a concert class or something. So. so let's see. Now you want me to angle it down a little bit towards my throat and away from my mouth? Like this? <laughs> Sounds so good. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, yeah, that did sound a little bit Can't wrong. <laughs> All right, awesome. So uh, basically, that's creating in the cloud. Uh, you're using Google Plus Hangouts to connect people all over the world uh, in the same room, and it, you could have multiple people in there. And it's real time, face to face. And it allows, the, the unique thing about it is it allows an interactive audience to be a part of the experience as well. So not only can you have different talents in the room, you know, somebody playing a guitar, somebody singing, an audio engineer, but you could open it up to the public to have them see what's going on and, and walk through the experience with you as well. So I want to uh, introduce the two people to my right and left. And over here, we have Tara Naomi. And just some of the highlights, real quick, because there's a long list, trust me. <laughs> She's a recording artist and a pioneer in online independent music scene. Uh, she actually came up with the idea of creating in the cloud. And she was one of the first artists to post music vids onto YouTube. And that led to her winning the first YouTube award for best music video back in 06. She's toured with The Fray, and Natasha Bedingfield, Sarah Bareilles. Uh, so career highlights, very extensive, and she's continuing to break boundaries in the social, digital world. And then to my left, I have Chi, who is like the, the brains of the operation <laughs> here. He's a MIT grad. He's worked 14 years at Microsoft as a programmer. He started the Pocket PC, which you might remember, then Windows. Uh, the mobile effort in Microsoft. He started the project to move Xbox Live out of the console and onto other devices and desktops. And then he joined Google five years ago. And since then, he's worked on Chrome, Google Talk, and Google Plus Hangouts, which we're going to be dealing with uh, mainly today. So let's get right into this. We want to give you an idea of what we have going on here and how you guys can utilize this and uh, hopefully use it to your benefit. Uh, Tara, first question, first things first. How'd you come up with this concept? Uh, well, first of all, I'm very hurt that I'm not the brains of the earth. You, you are, you no, are. I'm, <laughs> I'm clearly not. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll own that. Um, so basically, I was doing what several other musicians are doing now, which is um, broadcasting live concerts over Hangouts. And uh, while I was setting up my microphones and audio, my very simple audio, I have very limited knowledge, as I'm not the brains. Um, I have limited knowledge of recording. Um, so I had a, a friend that was in Toronto, and he's an engineer, and he was sort of in real time telling me, OK, no, no, move this here, move this microphone here, um, change this setting on your little M box. I use this little like thing to plug the microphone into the computer. 
And uh, while that was going on, I kind of was thinking, this is really cool. You know, he's able to tell me exactly what to do to get it to sound right. And then I kind of thought, well, if we can do this for a live broadcast, why can't we do this to record? If he's actually hearing and able to adjust the audio remotely in his studio, um, then we should just, why, you know, why can't he be capturing the audio at the same time and, and then also adjusting it, helping me adjust it, telling me what to do? And um, that was sort of how the idea was uh, born. A lot of people that you talk to are going to initially be skeptical about the idea of recording on the web. You know, uh, if, it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, people love the recording studio. It's, it's very intimate. It's, it's physical. It's, it's face to face. What would you say the benefits are of doing it this way as opposed to just being in the studio? Well, I mean, being in the studio is great. And um, I mean, I made my last album in a really nice studio, and it was incredibly expensive. So um, I also happen to live in Los Angeles. So it's like I can drive 10 minutes, and I'm at the village in like iconic recording studios. But if I wanted to record, and I didn't have a budget, and I didn't have um, access, and I was in some remote location, um, and I don't know how to go on and do Pro Tools or Logic or you know the more complicated aspects of home recording, and I want the feedback of a producer who's actually there, and I want the experience of working with a producer, um, this is a way to kind of remove all the limitations of budget, distance, access to various equipment and people, um, and have someone. It was, and it almost becomes, like you could see in the video, it's almost like uh, like he's in the next room. The, the computer screen almost feels like a, the window when you're um, in a recording in a vocal booth and you look out and you see the engineer sitting there behind his console and it sort of felt the same, although it was a laptop and he wasn't in the next room, he was in Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> when you're talking about saving costs and stuff like that, what, can you be a little bit more specific? What's, what's some of the areas that you're saving money in? Well, I mean, just working in a studio is going to cost you anywhere from probably 500 on the low end to several thousand dollars a day. Okay. So if you don't, you know, if you don't have that kind of budget, then it's tough to go into a studio. Um, and also, I mean, I just used um, like a really simple mic and a simple setup. I don't use Logic. I don't use Pro Tools. I don't even really use GarageBand. It's just not what I'm into. I like writing songs and playing music. So, so as long as uh, the vocalist or the drummer or whatever has um, minimal recording mm -hmm. equipment that mm -hmm. you know gets the job done, mm -hmm. that's all you need, like a microphone yeah. and a program on your computer. Yeah. And then what? Once you lay your vocals down, you just send it over to the engineer how does well, how does that exchange work we did everything like we set up a click track like you would do in a studio so that i played uh, i played guitar to um, to a click track which is like a metronome it just keeps the time so that you can then add in other instruments if you wish to do that after and it all lines up um, and uh, so so we we did that and then i laid down the vocal and we did the whole thing in front of um, a live audience online through a hangout at the time it was hangout party because we didn't didn't have uh, hangouts on air yet now we have um, through google hangouts the ability to broadcast out um, across you know to however many people want to watch and so we had not only the live recording experience going on but we also had an interactive audience which really is exciting to me just from a social media perspective because people become engaged in the process. They become, um, they kind of feel an ownership over it because they're part of it, and then they get excited about promoting it, which, as any independent musician knows, is kind of more than half the battle. <laughs> Can that be sometimes uh, distracting? Do you ever get like a heckler in the room and they're like, oh, this sucks, uh, change this, change that? I mean, can you mute people? You can uh, mute people, you can block them, okay. you can just kick them off. Awesome, so, that's you know, important. Yeah, yeah, you now, have some control. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, hey, this isn't a new concept. Uh, people use Skype all the time to, to do things along the same lines. Mm -hmm. And Chi can speak more about this as well. What, what would you think the, uh, the difference is between uh, Google Plus Hangouts and using Skype? Well, it's exactly what I was just talking about. Like the, the social media engagement aspect of it is totally unique because you have people in there. And with the way that Google Hangouts, and you can talk more about this, but it's all integrated into everything. So with one click, people are, you know, Getting, inviting other people in to watch the whole thing happening. There's a nice, um, 
link between Google Plus and YouTube. So now with Hangouts on Air, you can archive everything. So every recording session could be archived, and then it's instantly uh, uploaded and saved on YouTube. And then you can choose to make that public. So the kind of trading back and forth between the Google Plus sessions and YouTube viewers, and there's just so much cross-promotion. Cross and um, it's, I think that's probably the most unique with, with Hangouts, you this. can have 10 people in a room at one time. Yeah. And it can, you can span across the world. And we take the traffic of that onto a private network. So it's, the response time is really fast. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can talk with each other. You can collaborate. You can have arguments, which are like, even hard to have over a cell phone. Right. right? It's, it's like, um, in addition to that, the integration with the rest of the community allows people who are just watching, like thousands and thousands of people who are just watching, to contribute comments and give you feedback live. Right. And you can sort of filter them out and pick and choose and sort of modify and adjust and get the real-time feedback from your, your fans and your, your audience. Now, Chi, when you were working on this, when you were first coming out with uh, Google Plus Hangouts, did you anticipate it being used this way, like uh, recording artists using it to actually lay down tracks and, and do songs and stuff like that? Or did you have to kind of tailor fit it as people like Tara started using it that way? No, we, we had a very strong notion that um, it would be used for collaboration. Like Google as a company, we're spread out across the world and we have a philosophy of instead of uh, trying to bring everyone into one location to go where talent is and enable talent to reside where they are and to leverage that, which is I think what collaboration in the cloud is all about and creating the cloud because you can reach out to talent wherever they are Mm -hmm. um, so at Google, we run the company on Hangouts. Okay. We have thousands and thousands of Hangouts every day. It's how we do business. So we strongly believe in collaboration using this tool. We didn't really like, expect it to be done for music. And so like, <laughs> the codec that we have right now is tuned to voice and conversation, not necessarily tuned to music. And, but we're definitely adjusting it because of uh, what uh, people like uh, Tara are doing on it, with it. But now you do, uh, and I, this goes to you, you know, tailor fitting it to, you know, um, suit artists. Uh, you, you do have some collaboration tools on there available and stuff like that. Can you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we have a, a set of built in tools. So you can project your screen and show, show what people, what you're working on, on your desktop. Uh, you have documents that you can collaborate with, and people can edit and, and modify documents or show a presentation slideshow. Um, right, right built into Hangouts. And that's how we do our work at Google. But we also created a platform whereby developers can uh, write additional apps. So if you want to have a specialized uh, music tool, creation tool, um, you can write that. Right? So we've created a platform to allow developers, third parties, to build tools that we hadn't thought of that, that, uh, that we didn't even would dream would be used for Hangouts. OK. Um, a lot of people that uh, are technologically handicapped um, don't even want to get a new cell phone because they're like, ah, I don't want to go through learning all the different buttons and what is this Facebook button on my phone? You know, Some people are, are, have a difficult time with that. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of people concerned with how easy it is to go about setting this up and um, getting people involved and, and just the process. Because even in a recording studio, there's a whole lot going on. You got the patch base, you have the, the different programs running, you have multiple uh, booths. So how easy is this to um, set up? Well, we, we definitely designed it for uh, people who are not technical to be able to use it. OK. Um, so <laughs> so it, it's, she, that's, she's right there. She's, yeah. she's like, I, that's great. She, she, she relates to me. So, so you, 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 uh, you hit a button to, to create a Hangout. And you just invite in the people that you want, and then it, and it goes. And then you, you don't have to uh, mess around with it m much. We'll detect whoever's talking. We'll flip to whoever's talking. So even like in a 10-person room, like watching the main screen is like watching TV as it sort of flips back and forth. And you can just let it go and enjoy. Sit back and enjoy. Yeah. OK, cool. And uh, Tara touched on this briefly. Um, once you do a recording, it's automatically archived on, on YouTube? For the on-air, uh, okay. if, if you do a, a Hangout on-air, then yes, it's automatically archived on YouTube, and it's also broadcasted out using the YouTube uh, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So you can have uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people watching 
at a time. Okay. Absolutely. And so I guess that's kind of similar to um, like you stream when you do a, a recording there and then it's, it's kind of automatically archived so you could replay it and, and use it as a promotional tool. And yeah, absolutely. And you can use all the rich tools that are built into YouTube to uh, edit it as well as promote it on, on your site. Okay. And some people might not know there's also Google Music, right? Yes. Can you explain how that feature kind of ties in with Google Plus Hangouts? I think that the, the collaboration that you use allows you to create the content that you can upload to it. The Hangouts don't currently feed straight into uh, Google Music, and that's something that I mean Tara and others have done. Um, that's taking the content you build from it. Yeah, well, I think, I think that the potential is there, probably in the very near future, for stuff that is recorded this way to then, like, the, it's so quick to, to put stuff up on Google Music, and then the way that it feeds into the, um, to the stream on Google Plus is really interesting because um, it actually encourages people to buy music because they can have, like, a one-time preview of the song, and then, then if they want to hear it again in their stream, they purchase it, from, at least from what I understand. Um, but so I don't, I don't, that's not quite there yet, but I think that probably will be. It's, you know, I think you guys are just like rolling new stuff out like every day for this. We do so. push uh, new things every day. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is just really watching how people are trying yeah. to use Hangouts and Google Plus and supporting it. Right? And this is definitely uh, an area that we're seeing a lot of activity in. And uh, Google Plus, you know, it's still in its baby phase very much so. Mm -hmm. are, are you worried that? Because it's still growing, it's still you know attracting people. You know, people are just now catching on to it. Um, are you worried that you're rolling out all these different uh, features and things like that when you don't even necessarily have the the fan base that say uh, a Facebook or Twitter already has? Well, I mean, Google Plus has been growing incredibly quickly. I, mean, I think we just announced that we have 90 million uh, users, and we're seven months old. So that's not yeah. bad after seven months. Um, I, I think the, the, the passion that we're seeing around it, uh, especially in Hangouts, um, really uh, make me excited about the potential that we have. I, I think that the momentum is just growing and growing. OK, and this is also, it's also a good thing for aspiring artists as well, or engineers, because it's, it's almost like a live tutorial. You're, you're watching this. Uh, this song unravel or, or come together, um, and you're learning a lot of tricks of the trade and kind of um, things yeah. that ways you could tweak your voice, put reverb here and and uh, multi tracks and stuff like that. Right. That, well, that was the whole point. We wanted to do something that was um, entertaining, but also was educational, because I found like especially when I started like you know five years ago when I started putting videos on YouTube. Um, a lot of the people that were watching them and contacting me were other artists who wanted to do the same thing. And they were like, how are you doing this? What are you doing? How can I do it? And so to me, it's really important to be able to provide that information to other artists. Because what I can do on my own is like, OK, that's great. That's cool. But I want to see like what someone in you know, some bedroom in her parents' house and like 16-year-old in Oklahoma does with it. You know what I mean? Like I want to see like how other people collaborate and where they take it and where it goes. Um, and what it kind of evolves into when other people get involved and make it their own. So showing people how to do this, and also, I mean, just my own inexperience and my own ignorance as to like how the recording process actually happens was um, one of the motivating factors behind being educational with it. Because I wanted to learn, and if I want to learn, then you know, there's a lot of other people that want to learn. So right, right. yeah, we could show them. Should we show them? Yeah, actually, we're not going to just talk the talk. We're going to walk the walk. So uh, like, we're going to get into this hangout. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm we'll show you a, a, a live process of what's going on. And hopefully, it'll work out because that it'll would work out. help our panel. So um, we created a hangout before this, this panel started. And we have a couple, um, a couple friends in here right now. Uh, you can see when you scroll over, you're able to see people's names, which is really helpful when you've got nine other people in a room and you can't remember anybody's name, because that's what happens to me all the time. Um, so I'm like, oh, there's Rob Michael, there's Lucas Johnson, and there is Cliff Roth, although that's not Cliff, that's a photo that he chose that looks like, I mean, a, a painting. That's actually a live painting. A painting. I'm sorry? So it's actually being painted live right now. Oh, it's being, okay, perfect. All right, this is, this is the thing that we wanted to demonstrate, because um, one of the 
things that we were really excited about when we started my recording project was actually having artists collaborate as well, visual artists. So we had some people that were actually creating art live while, uh, while we were recording, and that was sort of going to be the art that would accompany the track. Um, so you guys set up a demonstration um, of how this worked, and Lucas is the uh, engineer, and he'll take hi. it from there. Hey, people. All right, so um, Tara touched on one, one thing that's pretty important is that not only is it educational and all this thing, but it, it really does make your audience feel like you're part of the process and really grabs them. And it's the idea of having one fan is more valuable long term than having 100 followers. And that's, that's kind of important. So we'll give you a, a rough demonstration of it. Inside the Hangout, I can do a shared screen. So I actually have Rob connected DAW to DAW through VST. Um, so we'll show you how that's going to work. So share screen. All right, so I can still talk to Rob while this is happening. Because it's VST to VST, it's not actually hitting the recording. So Rob, go ahead and play. So that's actually Rob's input coming in. Record. I can still talk to him while he's playing. And the cool thing about this is that there's no real track limitation. It's only bandwidth limitation. So I can have five, eight tracks going at the same time back and forth. Um, it is just a matter of how much your internet signal can handle this. Really playing real time streaming right through the you know, <laughs> this window into, from my studio into Lucas's. Works perfect. Yeah. Cool. So, so this 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 idea. Yeah, this idea is really just the tip of the iceberg. We're we're developing an open source platform to go along with this, to really enable what the audience wants. And I think this is the key. This is looking ten years down the line, of when everybody growing up on iPads and iOS devices is connected to this level, and this kind of interaction is expected. Awesome. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Can we get a little round of applause? <laughs> Very cool. So, uh, you know, I mean, everything we were talking about, you saw right there, it's pretty simple to use. I mean, it's happening in real time, face to face. It's pretty much as close as you're going to get to being in a live recording studio and you know when that's not feasible when you got somebody overseas uh, you know somebody in Canada uh, that you want to connect with you don't have to hop on a plane you don't have to spend a, a ton of money on uh, hourly studio rates mm -hmm. you could just link up with them within a matter of a couple of minutes if you notice, the response time is very fast on that. Yeah. And when, uh, when Lucas said, hey, Rob, start, like, it was milliseconds later that he actually started. So mm -hmm. the, the response time, cycle time for interacting is actually faster than a cell phone. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, and then you get the sort of the rich ability to see each other face to face, which I think just has higher bandwidth, higher fidelity in the communication. I think it's about that time. We're going uh, to take some questions. If anybody has any questions, just jump on that microphone right there. I just uh, I have a question um, regarding the camera. Can you hook up a, a high definition camera instead of using the webcam on your laptop? Um, yeah, so uh, you can certainly hook up really high quality cameras right now. We don't send uh, HD video across the wire. Um, but I think the important part about that, uh, using a higher quality camera, is light sensitivity. Uh, the more sensitive it is to light, the higher, um, uh, the, higher the frame rate will, will handle. So you can certainly have really high quality cameras. And that's what we'll use when we do the, um, the President Obama's Hangout on Monday. So he's going to really have a high quality camera to make sure that everything is just perfect. 
And that's just you interface with a, a certain box with your computer, or? Um, it, it'll come in however the, the, your computer drivers ha uh, do it. Uh, we don't do anything special there. And so we leverage the camera's drivers. But, but we've tested everything from an $8 camera up to a $10,000 camera. And, and we'll, we'll work with the range of them. OK. And uh, the same, it seemed to be a slight lag time for when he was speaking and when we were actually getting it. But um, you, you might have seen a little bit of separation between the video and the audio. So we don't sync the video and audio. Um, because if you sync the two, then you're always going at whichever is slowest. And we actually send the audio as fast as we can. Because what we notice is that when you're having a conversation with other people, if the audio is very, very fast, you can have the conversation. If the, the video lags a bit, that's OK. But if the audio is laggy, then the whole thing kind of falls apart. So if you see your video lag a bit, that's because we're pushing the audio faster. And when and we recorded, um, people watching live saw a slight delay um, with, you know, between the video and the audio, but the audio was being picked up. We were, we were using another program called Audio Hijack to capture the audio as I was recording it. So Lucas on the other side was hearing it in real time and was able to make, you know, to make all the um, suggestions and, that he needed to make. And it's not affecting the music right. portion of it. That's coming in as, as quickly as he's, he's right. you know, strumming on the guitar. So it's, it's only the, the, the viewers. viewers holding back. Right. Yeah, the viewers are, it's not quite synced, but yeah. Okay, but you can end up with a piece that you can post on YouTube that's totally synced. That's synced up, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, okay, great, thank yeah. you. Obama was like, I will not be pixelated, and she made that happen, <laughs> so I just wanted to <laughs> note that. <laughs> if anyone shouldn't be pixelated. <laughs> What's up? Uh, is there a minimum and a maximum amount of people that can uh, participate in on one session? Good question. Yeah, you wanna? Well, so, um, the, the minimum, you can have one or two people. Uh, you can have uh, private hangouts that are just focused on like two people talking to each other. Right now, the maximum is 10 people at a time who are actually in the hangout participating uh, audio and visual. But with on air, you can broadcast that out to tens of hundreds of thousands of people. And what we see a lot is that people will interact with you on the comment stream and, and send text questions and comment and feedback via text into your Hangout. Um, but actually sitting in there and having the conversation live is 10 people at most right now. All right, so, so a max of 10 can talk, and then uh, as many as possible can video chat on the side. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. And the more people that are involved in stuff like that, does that um, affect the, the speed or the process? No, it, if, if, you, uh, if you have 10 people in there, um, you'll decode a little bit more, so we'll load the CPU a little bit more. Um, but people generally don't feel a big difference between having two or three people versus having eight or nine or ten people. Gotcha. So uh, on the music side with, with the jam session idea, are you actually mixing and mastering a song at uh, a, a, you know, a, com a completely original track from start to finish and, and, and having a finished product from this? Yeah, I, I have a, an example of one song that we, that we started with. Um, and I'm not actually doing that, but um, Lucas picked up the audio in his studio. And he has a full studio. Um, now he's relocated to San Francisco, but he was in Toronto at the time that we recorded. And um, he, so he's, he's able to mix and master it as if I were in his vocal booth gotcha. singing. So, so, you're just, so he, he's doing the engineering, you're just streaming in. Yeah, the, yeah. he's telling me, set it up, set it, you know, I want it, because also I, I, I have a little more knowledge than I let on, but, uh, but I wanted to completely you know, go into it as if I knew nothing because, you know, there, I mostly know nothing, but there, you know, there was a time when I also did know nothing, but uh, I wanted every, I wanted it to be accessible to everybody who had a really limited knowledge. And so the engineer is telling you, do this, do this, move this, turn this dial up, adjust, you know, adjust the input, your mic's too hot, you know, and he's able to make these adjustments um, just, you know, and then tell me what to do. So now, on a scale of one to 10, how would you say the functionality is with that is, is it really a practical way to record, or is it still working out the bugs? Well, we're, just to jump in, we're, basically they're acquiring the pieces from all different places, and then um, you know the, the main engineer is mixing everything down, mastering it. So we do have a final product for you once we finish up with the questions that yeah. we're going to play to really show you gotcha. the quality of it and what it sounds like, you know, because I know that's on a lot of people's minds, like, all right, but is it practical? Is this something that could be slapped on an album and, you know. And, well, and the other thing is that the thing that I have to show you, like in, in the couple of months since the idea first kind of came about and since we first, first started testing it, 
um, there's been so many changes and improvements to Hangouts, and then there's also been, um, Lucas has been able to test all these different methods. And so now, what you're hearing with him recording Rob is going to, I mean, what it can do now is even like much better than I think the demo that I have that we recorded. Um, but the main thing is it, it works. It worked a couple months ago, and now it's, it just continues to get better because with, you know, with testing. And uh, my final question is, how does it link to, a, a, I have an internet channel on you got, um, how, how is the functionality as far as like linking what you're, what you're producing on here to your internet channel? Um, one, one more time, I didn't hear the uh, you, you know, if, if you're, you're, uh, you're, you have a partnership with, uh, with, with uh, YouTube and linking to your, your internet channel uh, through YouTube. Like any of your social networks and stuff oh, like yeah. that? Well, it automatically, when you do Hangouts on Air, the session is automatically archived and it's on your, it just goes right into your YouTube account and then you can enable it for public, um, I think it goes in as private, it, right? It, it, it's using the same account. So your YouTube yeah. account is connected to your Google Plus account. Mm -hmm. And so when yeah. you create an on air, it gets streamed and recorded onto your account, but set to private for you first. And then you can edit it, modify it, and then choose to publish it whenever you're ready. And then you could just post that onto all your different That's right. networks. Um, just one more quick question. When recording through this medium, um, and comparing it with recording in an actual studio, do you think the quality differs at all? I mean, because these are big studios with incredible equipment. What's the difference, do you think? Well, I if mean, there is? if you, you know, definitely if you have a $20,000 microphone or something in a studio, you'll probably notice a difference, you know. But the thing is, with audio the way it is, now and with all the with all with everything that can be done digitally to audio, which like depending on your, your take on that, some people like the fact that you can do that, some people don't. I mean, you can make somebody sound like they can sing when they can't. You know, that's sort of just a little example. But you can really do a lot to take audio that's recorded with a relatively inexpensive microphone and kind of like beef it up and make it sound um, a lot better than it might sound. Um, but what Naturally. You did, what you do is like you're using uh, really tools like Audio Hijack and all that to capture your audio, yeah. your actual audio, and they would send that directly to Lucas. Mm -hmm. And Hangouts was a collaboration tool that sort of pulled people together and facilitated that to work. So you can use professional tools for your audio capture. Oh yeah, right? you can. I mean, what I did was very basic. Like I just used a Beta 58. So and I, you know, I didn't have a special mic or anything because I wanted to see how. How, what it could sound like with just a very bare minimum. You know, I used a $150 microphone and um, plugged it right into a little two-channel inbox and then into my laptop. So we were kind of testing. We were testing like the very bare, basic, you know, minimal level of, uh, of equipment. But you could get as, um, right. as fancy as you wanted the, to, really. The thing is, you're, you're still dealing with top-of-the-line professionals. You know, you could, you could have, uh, you could have, um, people from the hit factory in NYC, right. you know, doing a, a Google Plus Hangout. So mm -hmm. it's um, it's wherever you want to go with it. If it's a bunch of a bunch of sixteen year olds on on a you know Casio with like a, a mic you could pick up at Toys R Us, you know, then you could use it that way as well. But um, the, you're not losing any credibility. I mean, it's just all these professionals coming together. Um, and, and making uh, music, but the thing is, um, nowadays, you could have a semi-decent microphone and uh, a decent program, and you could shoot that over to the engineer, and, and no quality is lost, um, because you know anybody who's in the business knows most of the, the production happens uh, post and and yeah. afterwards and you know things are beefed up and stuff like that so so continue to use your the tools that you always have used to do the recording and, and use hangouts to sort of collaborate and sort of bring the people together even if they're all around the world um, question for you guys <laughs> how does the legal part works I mean who's the owner of that final light song who's, who's, who's the real owner and can you use, for example, so, for commercial purposes? Always, Can you sell it to a brand, for example? Always the with with masters, the way it works is um, it's the studio it's recorded in. So uh, legally, it would probably no, not necessarily. Uh, Terror <laughs> take over. Okay. Well, well, it depends. I mean, like when I record with somebody, I own the masters. I own. I when I recorded for Island Records, they own the masters. 
uh, when I record for myself, I own the masters. I own the copyrights because I'm the writer. Um, it depends. I mean, if you're in a production deal, then the studio owns it. Then the, the studio that records it. But but doing it this way doesn't change any no. of that. It's okay. still it's no. still the same. Yeah, it's as if it were a studio. You know, if I walk into a studio and I and I say, "Will you record me?" They don't own. You know, they don't. They don't own. It's not thing. like Google Plus is forever right. now. You know, so <laughs> right. it, you still retain that. And when you when you record, like. You're, you're in a studio, you're on one side of the window, and, right. and they're on the other side, and now those two rooms can just be miles and miles apart. Yeah, they can be in different countries or across the world, but they're still, it's still the, yeah, it's still the same, same kind of feeling um, when, you're, when you're recording it. Thank you. Any other questions, guys? Uh, Chi, you, you mentioned that this is a, uh, designed as a general collaboration tool. And this is a television production conference. Um, how far away do you think it is, or is it possible now to say do a collaborative editing kind of video editing kind of situation where you have clients or people in different places, uh, and you're putting together a video project? I, I think that's something that um, uh, people are experimenting with now. Um, but if you think about what video conferencing is, is in general, and like the ability to really communicate at a higher bandwidth. Like, that's what Hangouts is tuned for. Right? And then we have, like, Cliff was screencasting as well as Lucas, so you could actually show and collaborate on the screen and see what you're building on the screen. Uh, we have general purpose tools like that at this point, but I think it's very open for more specialized tools as we go forward. Um, right now, we have tuned it for sort of the uh, business case uh, usage, but, you know, I, I think it's evolving extremely quickly. And for those of us who are just learning about how to get involved with, um, with Hangout, what's the process of getting involved? You be part Join of Google+, Plus. is it self-explanatory once you get online? Yeah, you go, you go to plus.google.com, you sign up, and then there's a button uh, over at the right side that says create a Hangout, and that's it. You, you hit it and you join, and, you, and there you go. And is there a way to take um, screen capture from the computer and stream that, like say the I saw the output of um, of a audio recording program in their, your demonstration just now. Could you have Premiere Pro or or Final Cut? Yeah, can can you switch back over to the um, the, the laptop for a sec? So if you if you look up at the, at the top corner, it says screencast uh, screen share at the top uh, left. So you hit that, and then you can pick whatever window you want to screencast, and you can pick anything that's running on your computer, and and we'll screencast it. So it doesn't matter oh, what you're using. Yeah, so you can share. You can share your entire desktop. You can share one specific app. Uh, you can choose whatever you want. And if you're tired of looking at somebody, you could just bring that up to block their face. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> serves yeah, like two I'm purposes. Sharing that now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, I, um, I think this is really exciting. Thank you so much for creating this. Thank you. I can't wait to use it. Um, <laughs> My question, when you create a Hangout, do you have to create a new Hangout each time you want to collaborate, or do you have like a set Hangout space? You know, the way we think about it is like, a new Hangout is created each time. Okay. Um, but you don't have to go and actively create and like have this big action. And in fact, like we've integrated it into chat, so if you're chatting with someone, you can hit a button that says, go to a Hangout. And it automatically creates it for you and sends the invite, and they just hit a link, and you're joined. I can show so them right now. Yeah. Want me to, can we switch oh, the screen on? Yeah. I can just show you my own. Like, here's my Google Plus um, account. So this is my, this is my, here's my circles, my friends, my, um, my stream. And every time somebody in my circles posts something, then it, it shows up here, sort of like Facebook a little bit. But then you go to. Um, Make sure you add her. See, this is great promotion. Oh, she yeah. did this on purpose. Yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> Not me. Um, so then if you see over here, uh, it says start a hangout. I mean, I'm going to close this hangout that I'm currently in, just so that. We'll call you back, Rob. See. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to click on start a hangout, and then it's really this easy. And it says, OK, um, there I am. And I can invite whoever I want. Like now, I'm going to invite um, Rob Michael. Or I can make it public. I could invite everybody. So it's public. I could invite my extended circles. Um, and then I'm going to do hangout and tells you nobody's there, and there's a sad robot with balloons all by himself. But uh, there so we are. So you create that, and then in, in a few seconds, people, mm -hmm. people kind of people pop in. People start coming in. 
And they all have a notification in their stream, um, the page that I showed you a second ago, and that um, tells them that I'm now hanging out and they can come join. And if you don't want them to join you, you just... You, do a pro you can do a private hangout. So I can only invite the people that I want to join me. Right. Um, or I can do public. Well, if you do a public, suppose mm -hmm. then you get a creep or something. <laughs> yeah. Can you can, you... This community is really self-policing. I mean, it's kind of interesting. It is, but if, if, if you do have a creep in there or a troll in there, then yeah. uh, you go over the icon, there's a button that says block, and then you can block them out. And yeah. then okay. you don't have to deal with them. I can't block myself, but... You can't block yourself. No. You can but get if you, rid if of you, all you scroll over it, you'll see a little... So whoever creates the Hangout has control. No, no, no. Oh. Um, there's no control over the Hangout. So if you have a creep in there, you can, anyone can block anyone else. So even if you're not the one who created it, you joined, and someone else is being a creep, you can block them, yeah. and, and then they can't interact with you anymore. So anyone can block, block anyone else. So okay. like if you hover over Rob, see that? So hover over Rob, there's that Ghostbuster, and so Tara can block But I'm Rob. not going to, because we if, like Rob. <laughs> so, so other people will still be able to interact with the person, but you just won't. Let's see, is there somebody anything. we can block? Oh, okay, okay. Because maybe what oh, you find know. creepy, another person really likes. You know? <laughs> Someone else's goal well, th is your Well, creepy. the only thing I'm thinking of is if you do, uh, if, if you involve children in what you're doing. Right. You don't want to open up the door yeah. for creeps to interact with children. That right, absolutely. In that so. case, then the thing is just invite the circles that you really want there and not open for public. Yeah, okay, yeah. great, thanks. Um, we got a few more minutes, so now I think we're gonna just play the final product for you, and you guys could check that out, and then we'll be hanging out on the side afterwards, so if you have more uh, questions, you know, you could ask us. Yeah, so this is just, um, like I said, this was done to kind of see what we could do with the sort of minimal amount of equipment, um, and uh, just kind of a test, a test that we did, but, um, oops, can we get the audio? Oh, that would be neat. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you guys thanks. for uh, taking part in our conversation. <laughs>